Okay, I'm parked up on the A69 and today's Halloween. And I'm gonna go and find Lumpkin Hall, which is what I was trying to do before. Actually Lang Lumpkin or Long Lankin was the traditional bogeyman of the border region. The man who mothers used to say to the children, be back at home at night. Oh Ron Lankin's gonna get ya. So let's go and find Lankin's Hall eh? there. be in that wood there, next to the A69. There should be some remains uh, to be seen. So let's go and find out. There's a little bit of a path here in this wood, and towards the there. But uh, I've not seen anything yet in the of the remains. Still there. Oh, there's a tree. Just going a little bit further. Plenty of fungi around here. I have absolutely no idea what they are. by the burn now. This bridge is a lot older than the A69 above it. But I still can't see uh, any remains. This side of the valley here. It's a bit too steep to have anything of any significance. So, must have passed it, must be a bit up, further up by the looks of it. A bit of stonework down there. That's not it. And there's this big ditch here. Which could be the remains of the mud. Because there's no stream in it. I'll walk down this ditch and up on the other side and have a look. Yes, a dry ditch there. Hopefully that will be the moat. Yes, I found it. That is the moat. And there's the remains of Lonkin Hall. There we go. The remains of Lonkin Hall. Lang Lonkin's hideout. Oh, Long Lankin, depending on your pronunciations. Long Lonkin. I'll give you a bit of a history lesson of this place. Right. It was started by uh, Philip de Ulicot, and he was uh, the chief forester for the Northumberland region under King John's rule and uh, the Umprovilles of Prudhoe didn't like the idea of a castle being so close to Prudhoe so they complained to King John to have the castle torn down so it was torn down now uh, the other coats complained to King John but uh, Umfraville didn't have permission to build Harbottle Castle and uh, King John apparently ordered uh, the Infravilles to pull down Harbottle Castle. Now, when you go to Harbottle Castle, um, there's a sign there saying that Henry II had ordered the Infravilles to build it, so they did have permission, uh, just not from King John. <coughs> Any case, King John became very unpopular, and uh, the Northern Barons rose up against him, and uh, they signed a pledge with uh, the King of Scotland, Alexander and uh, together they marched on King John. Uh, unfortunately, King John died before they got put, caught up with him. Um, if King John hadn't died, then Northumberland would be part of Scotland now. Um, which, to be honest, I think would be a better idea, but never mind. So, uh, <coughs> where was I? Yes, King John had died. So Henry III came to uh, power 
and uh, Henry III was the one who agreed the border with Alexander for the current Scottish border, um, which made the Tweed more or less the border with Scotland rather than the Tyne. And then it was Henry III apparently who had ordered um, the Umbervilles to pull down Harbottle Castle. Uh, a few years later, a few hundred years later even, um, this site became the hideout of the notorious Long Longin. And the remains that you can see behind me now are the remains of a 15th or 16th century tower. Um, and the legends of Long Longin say that he was a builder, so uh, the legends would have it, but Long Longin was the one who built that behind me as part of the hideout. Now, Long Longin, as I said in the previous video, he uh, murdered the mistress and the child at um, Welton Hall, which is a bit further up. Let's see, up that way. <laughs> which I visited in a previous video so, and that's why he became notorious and became the bogeyman of the borders and it's quite a place that I found it at last because this is about the third time I've tried to find it so this became his hideout apparently Oh, one last thing, yeah, the original castle that was started to be built here, the materials, in the past video I said went to Barnborough Castle, uh, there's two stories, one said that it went to Barnborough Castle, and the other one says that it went to help make Newcastle jail, so which is right, I'm not too sure, but the uh, Welton Hall, where the murder was supposed to have happened, um, that was owned by the Sheriff of Newcastle. So there's quite a good chance that the stones actually went to build the jail at Newcastle and not to bolster the defences at Barnborough Castle. So I'll leave you with some more pictures of it. I'll just switch the camera view. There's the main bit of remains. There's a little bit of wall down there, a little bit of wall here, and then around here, just above where the moat was, there's some more remains. It would have been a, quite a small castle. And there's a lot more masonry around here. Apparently, there's supposed to be a secret tunnel between here and the nearby farm. Nothing in form. But I think that's probably just legend. Can't see there being one here. There's some more masonry over here that's falling. There's quite a bit of masonry on the floor here as well. Now if you're feeling brave, you could do a wild camp with a hammock in one of them trees. Although to be honest, I think the A69 noise would be more disturbing than the, the feeling of any bogeyman ghost coming to get you during the night. <laughs> there we go. Lonkin Hall, the hideout of Lang Lonkin on Halloween. And now they head back home. It's quite close to the A69, not much of a walk. Um, basically, where the fence is broken, you just cross the fence where it's been broken, head down into the moat, and straight back up, and there you've got Longton Hall. And I spent ages trying to find this place. It's so easy. Should come back here at night time. <laughs>
across the fence here where it's broken and then just head straight up until you come to a moat and just down through the moat and then back up on the other side and there's the whole the remains of the hole. The path coming down from the the parking space on the A69. You just park up in the parking place and just follow the path into the woods here. Quite easy to find. I'm back up through the castle. But, uh, it's a bit difficult to see it behind me there because of the sun. Never thought I'd be saying that when <laughs> tomorrow is November. It's a cracking day. But, uh, if we had another car, we'd have been out in the Juviates. But as it is, we need the car to pick up the little one from school later on. But, uh, yeah, I'm just doing a quick five mile circular via Prudder Castle. Tied in with the Long Lonkin story goes there this morning. I was up at uh, Lonkin Hall. But, uh, this Prudder Castle, I'll switch the view actually. You can see it now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Prudder Castle was the home of the Umfravilles. They complained about the Ullicoats building a castle up at Nafferton on the Whittle Dean, which later became uh, Lonkin Hall after it was used by Long Lonkin as a hideout. But originally it would have been probably called Nafferton Castle if it had been built. They only built the foundations before the Improvilles complained. But uh, Pro Castle was the only castle in the Time Valley that wasn't taken by the Scots. Uh, and yet, by the sounds of it, uh, the Improvilles probably rose up against King John and supported Alexander of Scotland's claim on Northumberland. But, uh, they would sooner be part of Scotland than part of England under King John. Although under King Henry III things changed. I prefer King Henry III to Alexander. Even though at the time Henry III would have only just been a boy. So It's funny, we fought the Scots and there were some brutal battles in the north of England and on the borders. But at the same time, we've got just as much a history of supporting the Scottish monarchs for their claims of this land. Um, we've supported, uh, I mean, the first Earl of Northumberland. Uh, when William the Conqueror came, he fled into Scotland and tried to use the Scots to reclaim his land. And then uh, the barons rose up against King John, supported Alexander's claim. To Northumberland, and then uh, later on, ironically, the Percys and the Nevilles were fighting each other, and that practically caused the War of the Roses. And then, when Queen Elizabeth I came on the throne, the Percys and Nevilles joined forces together in order to replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. And then, in 1715, we rose up as part of the Jacobites. It's uh, often forgotten. But no fumbling support of the Jacobites. So uh, they might have fought like cat and dog with the Scots, but at the same time we supported them. In any case, this is Frida Castle. And I'm going to continue the rest of my walk.